Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Europa Universalis 4. This is a new game. We did finish the nights last Monday, and it is time to pick a different nation. So, for the interest of full disclosure, I did play very briefly after the uh, nights game finished as our new nation. We are going to be playing as Poland, uh, and it didn't go particularly well, so I'm going to take that as a learning experience. And we're going to be playing as Poland now, probably, come what may. So Poland are in an interesting position. You actually start in an interregnum, which means you have no monarch, so you cannot declare immediate wars. Which is unfortunate, because I'd very much like to go up to the Teutons early on. Uh, so that we can basically deny anyone forming Prussia as soon as possible, by just taking to, uh, Koningsberg. And also, obviously, we have a relationship with Lithuania, though that's not immediately apparent, it does become a thing a little bit later on. And then we're, we're, we're in the middle of Europe, so there's a lot of different uh, people going on around us. One of the powers that we need to be concerned about is Austria, uh, taking control of the HRE. Brandenburg, another one, very strong military power. Hungary can grow quite large. The Ottomans, obviously, though not an immediate threat, we do actually border them because Moldavia is one of our vassals. And then the big bear in the north, Muscovy. Um, if we are able to get an alliance with Novgorod early on, I would like to do that because I want to try and maintain Novgorod here instead of Muscovy. I think Novgorod will be a far better neighbor to have than the usually rather aggressive Russia as Muscovy, I'm sure, would like to form. Right, uh, let me just double check the options here. We're playing on normal because I don't really like the diplomacy changes for hard. We're not playing with Lucky Nations. The reason I don't use Lucky Nations is because if you play on historical Lucky Nations, it tends to be France, Castile, Austria, Britain, etc, etc, etc. It's all the big nations that are strong enough anyway, and what his, uh, Lucky Nations does, it makes the strong nations even stronger. So I prefer playing with no Lucky Nations so that everyone is on a more equal uh, footing, and that also means that you sometimes see some of the smaller powers actually able to rise to power, uh, depending on the dynamics and the things going on around them. And I just much prefer that, like, you're far more likely to see a decent Scotland with Lucky Nations turned off, for example. I think everything else we're just going to leave the same. Fantasy Random New World, we'll leave on Rare. I, I don't mind that appearing from time to time. And I think that's all good. I'm not playing with any other options. Okay, good. Uh, Poland selected. Let's do this. I'm not doing Iron Man. Don't like Iron Man. I hope you form the Commonwealth. That is kind of the intention. Although the Commonwealth has the same ideas as Poland, so basically it just means that we unite with Lithuania. When Władysław III fell in the Battle of Varna, both Poland and Hungary were robbed of their kings in one stroke. Without leadership, it is now up to the nobles of the realm to appoint a new leader. The most natural successor, Casimir Jagiellion, has been made the Grand Duke of Lithuania four years prior. Crowning him would, however, require reaching an agreement that is acceptable to both Casimir, the Lithuanians and the Polish nobles. Ever since 1392, the two states have been bound together by a series of agreements seeking to integrate the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Kingdom of Poland in order to allow them to present a united front against their common enemies, the Knights of the Teutonic and Livonian Orders, the Tatars of the Golden Horde, the Crimean Carnate, and the Russian principalities led by Muscovy in the northwest. This cooperation has allowed the two countries to thrive despite their many enemies, but integrating the nobility of the two divergent states has not been an easy matter. Among both the Polish and the Lithuanian nobility, there are some, the magnates, who control very large estates and command great political influence. These families are in some ways the financial and political backbone of their states, but they are also a power factor that even kings might think twice before rejecting. While large parts of their lands are sparsely populated, there is little doubt that Poland and Lithuania could be among the most powerful states in Europe if they go forward with their integration. Their enemies are, however, quite formidable. In the south, the Ottoman Empire seems to be at the gates of Hungary, ready to expand up the flow of the Danube. To the north, the highly militarized Teutonic Order consider the two states its main enemy. Perhaps most dangerous of them all, however, is the Grand Duchy of Muscovy in the far northeast. The Muscovites are rapidly creating a strong and expansive state to challenge the Lithuanian overlordship over the Ruthenian and Russian peoples that inhabit most of the Grand Duchy. Yeah, this is just vanilla. I don't generally play with mods. All right. Uh, we are Catholic with all the things that Catholic means. We are a unique government. We don't have it just yet, but we can become an elective monarchy. This means that other countries can support their heirs. It means that we have much easier access to heirs. Uh, and our... Nation cannot be claimed, so it's impossible for us to have personal unions. We'll see exactly what that means. I don't know. I haven't played an elective monarchy before, so I'm kind of curious. 
And we're next to the HR Ether, not actually in it. Marvellous. So we need to have some rivals. We are immediately rivaled by Denmark, Hungary, and the Teutons. Well, we definitely want to rival the Teutons back. Absolutely. And I think we'll probably rival Hungary. Although last time I did start out trying to make good with Hungary. Their enemies are Lithuania and Bohemia. Well, as soon as we get... Oh, no. Once Lithuania falls under a personal union, if it does, then that will actually be cancelled. Bohemia... You don't like Brandenburg and Hungary. Brandenburg, you don't like Bohemia. Oh no, rivals. Bohemia, Saxony, and Pomerania. We could make friends with Brandenburg here. And I kind of like that idea. It would allow me to build a rival state to Austria, which I like the idea of. So I think we're going to get an alliance with you straight away. Uh, we are also going to start improving relations with Novgorod. I think I'm going to start improving relations with Hungary, just to see if we can get that. If we can't, not a problem. Alright, so, we do have an army down here. We're going to move you north, we're going to move you north. And then after that, we will look to creating new armies. We do need to rival one other. I think we'll just go ahead and do Denmark, and you should go away. Marvellous! And we will not hire an advisor just yet. Oh, and trade. Trade's the other thing we need to do. So Brandenburg's now allied with us. Excellent. The death of the childless king Wanderslaw III in the battlefields of Varna split the union between Poland and Hungary and left Poland in an interregnum. His brother, Casimirus, the Grand Duke of Lithuania, was asked by the Polish nobility to assume the throne, but found their conditions unacceptable. In 1447, after three years of negotiations, Casimirus was finally crowned the king of Poland on his own terms and ruled both kingdoms as a union. So we can get Jagiellion, which means that Lithuania becomes a junior partner. So we get the... Uh, Junior, oh, sorry, we get the partnership right there. Or, let us appoint a local noble, which is a 666. Like, Poland has the potential to start the game with the strongest noble in place. It's tempting, but no, we, we're going to go with that. So we have a personal union with Lithuania now. And that also means that Hungary no longer has the mutual rivalry against Lithuania. That will go away because they're a personal union. Elective monarchy in Poland. On the death of the last Piast monarch of 1370, the Polish nobles began drawing on ancient claims and historical precedent to assert their independence from the monarchy. At first, only a small part of the Schlachter, or noble class, would assert its privilege to choose the next king, or in 1384 and 1523, queen, since they backed Jadwiga and Anna's claims. But eventually, the right to elect the ruler of Poland was extended to Polish nobles. Keep in mind that in Poland, nobility was inherited by all children of an entitled person. So at its peak, half a million Poles would be able to voice we would claim a voice in the election, by far the widest possible franchise in Renaissance Europe and possibly the largest democratic system until the American and French republics. That is something I did not know and it's a fascinating fact. Uh, true royal elections began in 1573 at the election of Henry of Valois. Since foreign princes were always claiming the Polish throne anyway, why not have the nobles choose among them? During the Commonwealth period, the kings of Poland and the Grand Princes of Lithuania were elected by the noble gatherings at a field in Wola, just outside of Warsaw. Tens of thousands of nobles would be expected to attend, and the richest magnates would mingle with the poorest count in exchange for favours and votes. The first elections took four days to conclude. Future ones would be smaller and over in a day or two. And these events would be full parties, fairs, and armed men. While the election was going on, royal power could be vested in an interrex, a temporary regent, usually the primate of Warsaw, who would oversee the voting. We will trust the sejim. You know, wouldn't it be great if Poland restored their union with Hungary? I would kind of like to do that. If another country puts their air on Poland's throne, as Poland to take prestige and legitimacy here. Okay. So, yeah. Like I said, I would like to get an alliance with Hungary. So we're going to improve relations. We can get them over zero. I think they need to get over a hundred though in order for that to actually happen. And we've achieved our first mission, get an alliance with Lithuania. Huzzah! Which gives us a play claim on West Prussia and Pomerania, which actually means we can go to war with the Teutons right now. Um, no, we can't. Not until the 11th of December. Okay. So they're almost certainly going to get some allies in the meantime. So Denmark's considered them a rival. And now we have too few rivals once more. 
Lithuania is no longer a great power. We are a great power. And we are incorruptible. And Teutons are no longer a valid rival of Poland. So we have eclipsed the Teutons already. Huzzah! Um, Hungary is still on that list. I don't know. I'd really like to go after Muscovy. Who's Muscovy rivaled? Novgorod and the Great Horde. We're mutual rivals against Denmark. With Novgorod. You got any allies yet? No. Pomerania is a new rival. Alright, so they've got their alliance with the Livonian Order. I'm not hugely concerned about that because we massively outnumber them. Also, it's gone at that date in December. So, here the battle can begin. I could offer Brandenburg land to join. I can give the Neumark. And you know what? I am happy to do that because I'd quite like to have Brandenburger troops in this war. It's slightly more difficult than you may expect. The Teutons start off with a lot of very militaristic um, traditions. So we're going to announce that Marienburg is our objective because it is fortified, it's the capital. So taking it will be much easier to hold on to it. Livonians will join and all of these guys will join as well. And yes, I will be calling in Brandenburg. Uh, and we'll give them Neumark, that's fine. Do it. Yeah, just because I'm claiming Marienburg doesn't mean that I'm not going to be taking Konigsberg. And I would like to say, objective, Lithuania, objective, Lithuania, objective, Lithuania. So I learned from previous exploits that Lithuania is absolutely garbage at defending against uprisings. And there will be a lot of uprisings because if we look at Lithuania, they are 90% uh, Orthodox and we are obviously Catholic. It's going to take them a while to convert all of that. And in the meantime, we have to deal with their rubbish. So I'm going to let Lithuania fight most of the battles, and I will deal with the rebels, if and when they appear. Right, uh, the other thing I wanted to double check was with the Teutons, what their abilities are. So cavalry combat ability plus 10% for any cavalry that they may have, and also a discipline of 5%. Actually, I should probably have a look at my own ones. So cavalry cost for us is reduced, and we also have max promoted cultures plus 1. And when we get all of them... Our ambition is Tolerance of Heretics plus three. So going Humanist might actually be a good option for us, rather than Religious. Uh, promote the Full Walk system, which gives us Production Efficiency plus 10%. The Nihil Novi give us Stability Modifier and Monthly War Exhaustion Reduction, which is really nice. I actually super rate Monthly War Exhaustion Reduction, because that means your War Exhaustion is going down even while at war, which usually is impossible. Uh, the... Pashota Wibranika, and I'm very sorry for mangling half of these words, I'm sure I'm doing it, which gives us national manpower plus 25%, which is good, so we'll have bigger armies, and also a very lucrative plus 10% combat ability, which is awesome. I actually much prefer combat ability to discipline. Combat ability means rebels don't inherit that. Rebels do, however, inherit discipline, so if you have high discipline, your rebels are going to be ridiculous as well. But if you have combat ability, you'll just thrash them. Uh, we get the Winged Hussars, which is amazing, which gives us a 33% cavalry combat ability and infantry to, sorry, cavalry to infantry ratio of plus 10%, so we can have more cavalry in our army. So 33% cavalry modifier plus the 10% infantry from this. Like, our armies will be fighting way stronger than you may otherwise consider. Regiment cost reduced by 10%, so all of our armies are just cheaper. We get the 5% discipline as well, and then a 15% morale of armies, which is huge! That's almost as much as France's Elan at 20%. So not only do our armies fight harder, they fight longer, which is amazing. Yeah, I intend to ally with Novgorod. I can't do that right now because I'm at war. Alright, here come the Lithuanians. They're actually obeying my orders. Uh, one thing I do need to do is give you guys orders. So Moldavia... Yeah, just go ahead and siege stuff. I will support if they come and attack stuff. So just do that. We'll group you, and we need a general. Can't afford a regular general. So we'll have to risk going with Casimiras, which is a little bit scary. Alright, Brandenburg's taken over Neumark. That's fine. That was the agreement. France. 
In exchange for accepting the Treaty of Tours in 1444, the country of Maine, county of Maine was promised to France. In practice, however, this has taken quite some time to materialise. The arrival of Charles the Seventh himself on the scene seems to have made the holdup go away. However, and now Maine is finally in our hands. So, they did cede Maine to France. So, no war between England and France. Can ask for a general from our estate. Uh, no we can't, not with an influence, a base influence of 70. Flipping hell. Because that would add a 20, we'd have 90% influence. Ugh. Yeah, we're not doing that. That's a silly plan. Oh, they're merging together. Uh, so we should, oh dear, that's going to take a while to march to. And if they're just coming to siege some stuff, then fine. I'll let them suffer some attrition. I'm just going to stand here so that we're not losing troops. I can join fights if I need to. They're just coming to siege stuff. Let them. It's fine. We massively outnumber them. Brandenburg, where are you going? All right, you're moving north. That's fine. Yep, just let them suffer some attrition. I'm fine with this. Poland, historically, was the most religious and humanist country in Europe up until World War II. Poland was proud of its large Jewish population. We're still making money, which is nice. Although this time I did not hire any more troops. Uh, we're suffering attrition here. We're suffering quite a lot of attrition. What's your supply limit? 13? That's rubbish. Alright, we'll go here. Alright, what's this province? Highland, so we could attack into there and suffer, uh, have a bonus. If memory serves, the Teutons don't actually start with much cavalry. Yeah, they have 3,000 to our 6,000. So even though their cavalry are awesome at this stage, they just don't have very many because we gave them no time to build up. Yeah, I'm probably not going to feed Lithuania very much. I'm quite happy taking this territory for myself. Oh, they're moving. Probably to go and raise the siege of Osterroad. Thankfully, they have to go all the way around Warsaw to get there, and I just need to go into Plock. Oh, that's a point. Yeah, we should totally take this stuff first. So I'm going to say Brandenburg, your objectives. Oops. And uh, Lithuania, I want you to take these. I might actually cancel these for the moment. Not uh, Marienburg, because we actually want to keep that one, so I'm going to say an objective. We're going up to Konigsberg. Mr. Road already fell. Ah. Go, 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 go. Don't get there in time. Nope. Probably should too. Because we actually want to piece out the Livonians before we piece out the uh, Teutons so I can get money and stuff from them. Very small. What's that? 3,000 man army. Just caught on their own. And we'll get the defensive bonus. Oh, what? We didn't catch them. Oh, man. But we did. Oh, we now have military points to actually hire a general. Please be something good. Uh, you're not. We've got a minus one, unfortunately. But there's only 3,000 of them. So this should be a fairly easy fight. Unfortunately, we did get attacked over there again, but stack wipe. Interrupted. Yeah, anyway. I had all quality problems, so cost of units has gone off for two years. Well, I don't intend to buy any troops for a while, so it's fine. All right, captured one castle. Oh, you left it. Damn it, Brandon! You're about to win that fight. 
Ah! Oh, I think I'm in back. Oh, if only we had Force March at this stage, that would be nice. Yeah, this is going to take a while to get here. Both of these sieges falling would be a problem. Oh, no, we won that one. Good, good. We definitely want to take Marienburg if we can. I will stand here. Even if I'm taking some attrition, this is worth waiting for. Because it will take them a while to re-siege this stuff. Lithuania, what are you doing? Best trapped. All right, we'll join this fight. If you hold, don't don't run. Wait, hold, 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 hold. Yes, Boya. Poland arrives and saves the day. War score is war score. Come on, take Marienburg, then we can get the ticking war score. 42%. I'm sitting here with 20,000 men, so we should be able to take this fairly easily. Come on. Come on. Am I going to join the Reformation? I haven't decided yet. Kind of depends on the uh, political sphere. Come on, take the sodding city. Hurry up! Oh, come on! Alright, thanks for the new Rome 2 update. Total War Attila and Rome 2 don't work anymore. Uh... Is that just a launcher issue? I remember back in E3, uh, Lithuania or Bohemia would conquer all the steppes pretty often. Yeah, I've seen the Commonwealth spread all the way east to Ming before. And that's kind of what I'd like to do. I'd like to basically just turn into Russia. Just a much, much embiggened Russia. Can we please take this fort, for goodness sake? How many failures can you have? Thank you. Finally. I'll go and raise this siege, I think. Warsaw is... Uh, actually, this might be for just farmland. It is. There's no real huge advantage to doing this. So actually, I think we're going to go here and force them to leave. Or lose that army. Look, they did arrive. We're on a minus one. Might actually beat us here. That would be annoying. Especially with the Livonians on their way. Yep, they did beat us. Irritating. Hey, I said Krakow. Cavalry flanking ability plus 50%. That's pretty nice. How much of a garrison do you have? 340. Not a huge one. Where are the roses? Has broken out. And they're supporting the Lancasters. Of course they are. It's the right choice. Who's going to siege first? The size of this garrison, I kind of suspect that they will. And now I am bleeding manpower, which I don't like. That is the problem with these early wars. <laughs> you go through manpower like that. Which is why I've been very, very careful about what I siege. Let the minions do the sieging instead of me. 14%. Come on, Lithuania. I believe in you. 7. That was a fail. Good. I mean, we could go and try and re raise the siege on Osterode. Let's go and maneuver ourselves into a position where we could more easily do that. 14%. Uh, actually, I meant to keep you there. Never mind. 7%. Alright, you're both on 7%, and I'm going to gamble that the Teutons want to stay 
on Marienburg. So if I can beat these guys separately, then I can go after the Teutons, like, right after. Nope, they did. No, only 2,000. They have a really good general, though. Flipping hell. Right, this is a victory for us. Costly one, though. Let one more cycle go. Come on. 20%. Damn it. And now they're going to win on a 14, aren't they? I just know that they are. Okay, they didn't. Um... The perfect rusher is Poland. Ha <laughs> Yeah, I don't really care about being HRE Empire. Emperor. I wasn't really intending to do much with the HRE. Except just be a constant thorn in their side, because I don't want them growing too strong. Am I going to be permanently allied to Prussia? Probably not. This is mostly just so I can control how much they grow. The main thing I want with Brandenburg is a counter to Austria. So once these two have grown big enough where they're constantly trading blows at, like, roughly equal terms, I'll probably break it off. Like, this is definitely a geopolitical strategic alliance rather than... Security. All right, Livonia can bugger off. So we've taken everything that's important from them. I am going to accept just money and war reps. Because I don't actually want to kill you. Although I might tell you to annul your treaties with the Teutons. So now it's just us against the Teutons. And at this point, I think I will need to go and attack the knights, though I'm not 100% sure of success here. And we are running out of manpower. Which is a problem. Oh, we're smashing them. I had no cause for concern. Alright, good. Siege lifted. I can go home, lick my wounds. And then let my allies come flooding in. Although I could actually have gone and killed them. Hang on. Let's do this. Because they're not going to have an end of month to recover morale. So we might actually stack wipe them here. We did. Good. So the Teutons have no army. So now I can definitely go home and just relax a bit. I've never assaulted a fort. I've assaulted a couple, but it's like a very situational thing. If you have an overwhelming superiority in infantry and you already have a breach, it can be worthwhile, especially if their garrison is small. But it's costly. It can also be worthwhile if you're using a mercenary army. Because mercenaries tend to replenish faster and you're using money. So if you're a wealthy nation like Venice, it can be very worthwhile. Because it's just a massive time saver. The Teutons are rebuilding surprisingly quickly. They must have got mercenaries. They've got 5,000 men already. A merchant effects. Ooh, merchants. Right, that's another thing I need to look at. Our use of mercantilist policies is proving frustrating for some of our merchants, causing some to defect to other countries. So we can get more mercantilism, but Poland gets poorer. Or we get the trade efficiency. Mercantilism for us is going to be excellent, so we're definitely taking that. And our heir is Bohemian. Do I have any way of messing with this? Yes. Increase our support for Christoph by five as an heir by spending ten prestige. And how do I know support levels? Aha! So Bohemia's got 11. I've got 10. I start with a base of 10. And Kristoff is good. The 5-3-3. Three, three. No, he's not. Hang on, what? It's the 3-4-6. Three, 